Hello, and welcome to the CA Oxerve D2D How-To Video Series. In this video, we'll show you how to restore data from a recovery point. Each time D2D performs a successful backup, a point-in-time snapshot image of the backup is also created. This snapshot image is known as a recovery point and allows you to locate exactly which backup image you want to restore. If you encounter a problem where your data becomes lost or damaged, you can use this collection of saved recovery points to rewind your system back to a point in time prior to the problem and then restore the known good data that was backed up at that time. In this video, we'll show you how to restore selected source data to a specified destination using a recovery point. Let's get started. Here's the Getting Started screen where you can click the Settings, Videos, or the Product Documentation icons to better understand CAOXERV D2D. Otherwise, click Close to begin using CAOXERV D2D. From the home page, click Restore to open the Restore Methods dialog. And then select the Browse Recovery Points option. The Browse Recovery Points dialog opens. From here, you'll need to specify a backup source location, choose a recovery point date, and then select a session or recovery point to restore. First, specify or browse to the location where your backup images are stored. You may need to provide username and password credentials to gain access to that location. You can click the green arrow button to verify that you have a valid connection to the location if needed. When you select a source, the calendar view updates to highlight all dates in green that contain recovery points for that backup source. Click on the date for the recovery point you want to restore. D2D then displays the corresponding backup content, including any applications for that recovery point. If the recovery point has a clock icon with a lock symbol, it indicates that the recovery point contains encrypted information and may require a password for restore. You can choose an entire volume, selected files or folders within the volume, or an application, including database components within the application. When you are finished specifying the backup information to be restored, click Next. The Restore Options dialog opens. From here, you need to choose the Restore Destination. You can restore to the original location from where the backup image was captured or to an alternate location. If you select an alternate location, you may need to provide username and password credentials to gain access to that location. You can click the green arrow button to verify you have a valid connection to the location if needed. Next, specify what you want D2D to do to resolve any conflicts that may be encountered during the restore process. Choose Overwrite Existing Files to replace data that already exists at the restore destination. If you select this option, the Replace Active Files option is enabled. You can then specify what you want D2D to do if the existing file is active or currently in use. With this option selected, D2D will not immediately replace the active file, but instead will postpone the replacement of that file until the next time the machine is rebooted. If you do not select this option, any active files are skipped from the restore. Choose Rename Files if you want to create a new file with a new name if the file name already exists at the restore destination. Choose Skip Existing Files to not overwrite existing files that are located at the restore destination. You can also specify if you want D2D to recreate the same root directory structure at the destination that exists in the captured backup image. Finally, if the recovery point data you are trying to restore is encrypted, you may need to provide the encryption password. When you are finished specifying the restore options, click Next. The Restore Summary dialog is displayed. Review the displayed information to verify that all restore options and settings are correct. If the information is not correct, click Previous and go back to change the incorrect setting. If the information is correct, click Finish to launch the restore process. D2D confirms the restore job was successfully submitted and displays the progress on the job monitor. That's it! For more detailed information about this procedure, you should always check the official D2D user documentation. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit our website where you can view other titles in this video series.